والخلائك بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتل بالصخور ميضان عرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف العنبياء والمرسلين الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي العرضين بأبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم تنزيله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا قالت امرأة امران رب إني نظرت ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات الله ونسل على محمد وآل محمد First of all we thank Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى once again for granting us with this great and wonderful moment wonderful opportunity to continue to acquire the understanding of our religion and to be able to worship Allah according to his wish and according to his teachings and commands. Tonight, inshallah, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of two important things. The first one has to do with the significance of this month which is going away from our hands. And the second is to touch a little bit just for the sake of creating awareness on the concept of niyaz, which I'm sure you received email this afternoon also, and the concept of another, or what we call in Urdu, kundi. First of all, if you look at this month, it is a very, very important month in the sense that it is regarded as the beginning of our journey towards Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm sure each and every one of us knows the importance and the significance of this month. But it is very, very important to remind one another when the month is coming to an end. Tonight is the night of the 23rd of this holy month. And we have numerous teachings and rewired from Ahlul Bayt, especially our Sif Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, sallallahu wa sallam, wa alayhi. Whoever aspires to get closer to Allah and to gain proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should begin with that in the holy month of Rajab. Somebody visited our Imam towards the last days of this month. When he came to Imam, Imam looked at him and Imam said to him, Have you fasted in this month or not? Then he said, I have not fasted. Imam said, even for one day? He said, yes, I have not fasted for one day. And I'm sure it will be applicable to some of us here. Maybe we have not even taken the pain or pleasure to fast for at least one day in this holy month of Rajab, which is regarded as the month of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fellow said to Imam, I have not fasted. Then Imam said, if you have not fasted and this month is fading, you are getting away and getting to an end. You have lost and missed out of something which is very, very profound and magnificent. Then he asked Imam, but we have still a few days to go. Can I fast? Then Imam said, yes. In fact, fasting in the last days of the holy month of Rajab is highly recommended in the teachings of Ali Bayt and highly cherished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, brothers and sisters, those of you who were fasting right from the beginning of this month, do not get tired, continue until month of Sha'ban, until you went down the holy month of Ramadan. Those of us who have not get the opportunity to fast in the beginning of this month, we shall try as much as we can to make good use of the last days and the last week of this holy month of Shabbat. Right. As we all know, brothers and sisters, you see, Quran is always very clear and on spot when Quran addresses issue. You have a verse which always rings in our minds. Where Allah Tabar what Allah said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajab. We are from Allah, our we belong to Allah, and to Him is our return. Now this verse, I think several times 
we highlighted on the significance of this verse mystically and spiritually. But you know, human beings we have short memories, so therefore it is highly recommended. Now and then we remind one another so that we may not fall in the pit when others are rescued and saved. When Allah says we are from Allah, and to Allah is our return. Now, in the normal translation or interpretation or commentary, which we all have, is that Allah created us and we will die and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now, when you come to the world of spirituality, which I think we are spiritual in essence if you look at our lives. Yani, from the word go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. For the spirituality to manifest in our lives. Allah knows this world will be dominated by material, but He makes sure the chief component of your existence is spiritual, which is your soul. The Quran comes forth and said, You know, the soul that you see, which is the chief component of your life, it has two potentials. The potential of becoming Fajr and the potential of becoming Muttaki. The potential of getting overtaken by Fujur, by wrongs, by sons, by Gunat. And the potential of becoming spiritual and overwhelmed by the love and the ishq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when Quran said we are from Allah and to Allah is our return, mystically, or spiritually, they said, no, we have two arrows. We have an ascending arrow and we have a descending arrow. What does it mean? We've all descended from Allah the very first moment you become Balik. The moment you become mature, the moment you are sent to Munkar Wanakir, the moment two angels start being with you to write either your good deeds or your bad deeds, the journey to Allah begins. So I want say, in Allah, it means you have all descended spiritually from Allah. Wa inna ilayhi rajoon, and to Him is our return. Means we begin our journey towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The verse which was recited in the mosque after after namaz, we said, "Tabakan and tabak." You will climb stage by stage. And when you come to the spiritual journey, we are of different stages. We sit here in the mosque. Some of you, when you enter Hussainia, the feeling is different. Some of you, when you enter, you feel heavy. You want to go out. You get tired quickly. Some of you, when you are at is recited, you feel so attached. Some of you, you say, no, this guy is taking long. You know, it depends on your spirituality and how the soul is prepared for Allah. Therefore, this month, brothers and sisters, it is a month for every seeker of the truth. Underline the seeker of the truth. It is your month to begin serving and searching for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever wants to be successful in his wa'inna ilayhi rajoon, the best month is the month of Rajab to begin with. Therefore, eight days, eight nights, seven days, seven nights is still more. It's not late. If you do not have the opportunity to fast and to make the hajjud and to perform your Quran recitation, you still have few nights and few days in this holy month to begin with your spiritual journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, we have abandoned spiritual journey like the way we have abandoned Quran in our lives. Therefore, we don't grow spiritually, material we grow. Therefore, they said we have a journey within this world and we have a journey from this world. Journey within this world is with your material component. And journey from this world is with your spiritual component, which is your soul. And when they talk of journey from this world, they are not talking of dying and getting married. They are talking of starting to arm oneself with the love of Almighty Allah and the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, number one, my advice to myself 
and two brothers and sisters is that let's try as much as we can in our very busy schedules, in our very tight schedules, to try to invite Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's try as much as we can to ensure the continuous presence of Allah in our lives. As that is the only thing that can help you and take you far away from any satanic act. Therefore, the simple act we know first. This month is full of blessings of the bears of Ahl al-Bayt. It's full of blessings of the Amal. Fast, recite Quran, wake up at night and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore we have a riwayah from our Sif Imam where he said whoever fasts on the 22nd of this holy month, yani the month of Rajab, when he dies, before he dies, Allah will send the angel with cups and in that cup there will be water from the Jannah. And they will give him that water to say, quench your thirst before you meet Allah. 22nd. And we have a wire also on the 23rd, which is tomorrow. In fact, we have a wire until the 30th, if you look at the teachings of our beloved Sif Imam. Whoever fast on the 23rd of the holy month of Rajab, when he is dying, he will be called from afar. This is the wire. Yunada bin Bahidin. He will be called from far to say, Tuba, rejoice. You have accomplished your mission in this world and you are welcome to the abode of Allah. You get the word in Kiyama and you become so spiritual in your life. You become so inclined to the teachings of Allah. You become a true servant of Allah. You become a free worshiper in the face of the universe. You become independent of us. We are not independent worshippers of Allah. We are not free worshippers of Allah. We slaves like Imam Ali mentioned. The only way to do that is not a miracle. Is to make efforts for you to be able to enjoy your life in this world. Enjoyment of this life is Hayat al tayyibah Allah mentioned in Quran. من عمل عملا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلا يحيينه حياة طيبة. It's my last point. Allah said, whoever performs a deed or an action, whether male or female, and they are believers, Allah said, والله إسلام القسم فلا يحيينه والله we will ensure that that person will have hayat and tayyiba, good life. Here, good life is not talking about what you have accumulated. It's talking about the inner peace. Your inner machine must experience peace. If your inner machine does not experience peace, then you have not benefited from the life of this world. And the only way for the inner machine to experience that peace is to make it get used to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once it gets used to the worship of Allah, then it will never go wrong. So therefore, let's all try, inshallah. Rajab is still more. We enter Shaban. Welcome Ramadan with spirituality. Don't welcome Ramadan with other things only. Welcome Ramadan with spirituality, with the ishq and the love of Allah. And I promise you, Whoever will make good use of Rajab and Shaban, you will enjoy Ramadan within yourself. You try it and see. You will enjoy Ramadan to such an extent that you will be sad when Ramadan is getting to an end. Like though we are told our Imams, when Ramadan was getting to an end, they would start crying. Wake up at night sometimes. Fast, recite Quran. Do charities in this month and Allah will help you. Now, second point is the point of tonight. That we have all gathered to remember as many put it. What once transpired in the life of our Sif Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq Salawatullahi wa Salam. Concepts, I'm sure most of you, you know, is a locus of contention. 
There are so many discussions about this Kondi on Yaz or not. Someone ask a question, is it Islamic or is not Islamic? One. Someone ask a question, is it a better or innovation or is not innovation? We need to know where we stand at the lovers and the followers of Adam Bayes. We don't have to do things blindly. ولا يحل له أن يفعل فعلا حتى يعلم حكم الله فيه. It is not acceptable for a believer to take a step, no matter what the endeavor he or she is in, until and unless he or she knows what Allah says about it. What's the teachings of Rasulullah? What's the teachings of Ali Bayt about it? And there are reasons as to why we gather. And we have the niyas, and we do it in our houses. Some give some funny reasons, which are not good reasons. Uh. One reason some people mention, which personally I don't accept, and even if they our ulama do not accept that reason. May God forbid they said that day Muawiyah died, so you celebrate. It's a waste of time to celebrate the death of Muawiyah or the death of Aisha. Well, it's a waste of time and energy. It's a waste of resources to learn the tafsir of Fatiha or Bismillah or Rahman or Rahim is better than celebrating the death of somebody. Huh? Who tell you will die as a moment? Who tell you will go to Jannah? Do you have any guarantee? We are not condoning what they did. It's up to them. Allah has shown us the way. We are free. We have to make sure we strengthen our Iman in the way that we have discovered. So therefore, some people give that reason. You read the, even on the internet, you will see people writing those kind of things. And Alhamdulillah, ulama, they chucked it out completely. That is not the reason. The second reason which people give, which is a good reason, and we are very wired on that reason. But now the question is, the way we do it, was it the way it happened or not? The reason is that there was a day, our beloved Imam, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, sallallahu wa sallam, wa was smoking with his companions and entourage in the holy city of Medina to We have been wired our books like that. Myself, I made my personal research on this thing three, four years ago. As Imam was walking, Imam stood and he looked at his companions and he asked them, there are two versions of this rewire. One person said that Imam asked them, which day is this day? And they said it is the day of the 22nd of Rajab. Which some scholars said not to Imam, did you know the day why Imam was asking them? Some said, no, Imam, you know, but he just wanted to make sure they also knew. But the other person, they said, no, Imam stood and asked them. But sometimes you don't pass by the wire. You have to look at the wire, whether it goes with common sense or not. So Imam asked them, do you know the value, that's the second verse, do you know the value of this day? Then they said, Imam, the month, the month, the yes, we are in the month of Rajab, we are all fasting in the month of Rajab. And today is the day of the 22nd of the holy month of Rajab. Then Imam said to them, today is a very important day. And it is a good day for a believer if a believer knows what is in a day of this nature. Then Imam said to them, listen very carefully. Whoever on such a day offer another to my person, means to me, you offer to my person, and then after offering, you make to ask, to ask Allah to do my wasila, and the wasila of the Sif Imam. <coughs> you will be relieved of your afflictions and difficulties. <laughs> we have a wire in our books. So from there it started. But you realize that it is not commonly practiced in the whole Shia world. It's normally practiced in a place where predominantly Asians, <coughs> India, Pakistan, mostly. Other places they don't practice it. This is therefore when I'm going and say, is it Wajib or is it not Wajib? So here they say, when we say Nazar, Nazar are about three, four meanings in Islam. The first meaning of a Nazar is offering, to offer something. Nazar with the meaning of an offering is not wajib in Islam. Like, I think what we are doing tonight is, is like offering. So if somebody says, I give food in the name of Imam, but I will give you conditions. If those conditions are not met, then you are not going to be acceptable. 
So offering means nada. You offer something in the name of my beloved Imam. And after that, I make it to out to the wasila of that Imam for Allah is good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's excellent. It's highly accepted by Allah and Allah. The second meaning of nada is to make a spiritual oath or covenant between you and Allah. That if something positive happens to you, you will do something for Allah in show of appreciation. That one, if you are fulfilled and you manage to get what you want, it becomes wajib on you. That's the second meaning of another. Say, for instance, I'm writing an exam and I tried my life, but I realized that they were so difficult. I want to and I said, Allah, if I pass my exam, I will go to Umarah. Now, the moment you pass, Umarah becomes wajib on you. An example is that Allah, I have applied for a tender. If I get that tender, I will go to the mosque every day for the period of one year. You get it? It becomes wajib for you to go to the mosque. You don't go, it becomes a problem. If you die, your first son must pay it back. So this is what you make that agreement. On condition that if it happens, that is also wajib one. The other meanings doesn't apply to us in Arabic. Sometimes doesn't will mean to warn somebody. And warn you admonish someone else. When you go to Quran, you realize that Quran used the word nadar when it comes to the first two meanings. Offering or taking spiritual oath or agreement between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the question of it calling it in yas, myself, I try my level best to find out. Niyaz basically is a Farsi language, it's Iranian language, or Afghanistan, or Persian uh, speaking people. Like the Niyazman, someone who is needy, Niyazman door, people who are needy. So now if I come to Mangoshmo, Niyaz door, I'm going to need with you. Niyaz is a Farsi language, whoever you say is something which you need from someone. So someone might want to say, no, why do you call it Niyaz that food? Only he asked because I need Imam to do something for me. So in case I get it, then I call it that because I need to give the food. Not people who eat the food need the food from me. Yani, you're not doing favor for people to give the money for food. Because you are looking for something, unless you do it for sure of that something else. Now there are two basic conditions for this thing, not to take much of it. Those conditions are very important. <coughs> if those conditions are not there, then it becomes a show off. Therefore, some will call it is a cultural social gathering. Oh, okay, no problem. It's a social gathering when women and women meet in Arab, they eat, they laugh. It's good, no problem. It's blessing. It's baraka. There's no problem. But have you want to have a reward from Allah? Do you want a reward from Anvite? Are you offering it for Imam? Or you are offering it to who? Let us look at these two conditions and then we close. And these two conditions, I want to use the best of Quran and one wire to establish them. The first one you all know is the question of the two sons of Adam. You all know the story. Habil and Kabil. Kabil ended up killing Habil. And you are told whoever commits murder, it is as a result of that. Okay, now, why Kabil killed Habil? Is because they all offered another to Allah. Another they offered to Allah, both of them. And that of Habil was accepted by Allah, and that of Kabil was rejected by Allah. So when his was rejected, he became angry. And then enmity developed. And he started attacking the brother and he killed the brother. He became crazy. Now when you look at Quran, Chapter 5, verse 27. What does Allah say when He speaks about these two sons? At the end, Allah said, Inna It's a kabbala kurbana. He said, The two, they mean kurbana, offer to Allah. For to kumbi them in alima. And then the one, the kurbana for one of them is accepted by Allah. And the other one is rejected by Allah. And Allah peace. 
the condition, Inna ma yata makbala Allahu min al-muntaqi. Allah does not accept from every ton of the journey because you have money. Allah accepts from someone who's got taqwa in his heart. You offer, is it for taqwa? Is it for show off? Is it for what? Show off, no problem, social gathering, what? Ya Allah, bismillah, no problem. But is it for Allah? Innama yatakabbarilla ala tuhasas. Indeed, Allah accepts from muttaqin, those who are taqwa. Ya'ni, when you offer that thing, you do it to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu. If it is not for the pleasure of Allah, so don't call it for Imam. It's not for Imam. It's not for Imam if it's not for the pleasure of Allah. Now let us look at the other conditions. Now the same thing in Quran. Look at Quran. The verse I quoted, chapter 3, verse 35. The mother of Maryam. The mother of Isa. And the grandmother. When she was pregnant, she conceived. رَبِّ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ مَا فِي بَطْنِي مُحَرَّكًا Allah, I made another. There's another that you've got. For what is with me and in my womb? If I deliver a son, I will take this son in your way. Worship you. Enlighten people about your affairs. Enlighten people about your teachings. Then what did she say at the end? فَتَكَبَّلْ مِنِّي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّبِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ Allah accept it from me because you are the one who hear and see. Yet you hear me and you see me. You know my intention. And you the acceptance only in your hand. But now when Allah blesses her with a child, he blesses her with a girl. And he went out to her own self. And he said, I'm going to her own Okay, I'm delivered, but the female is not like a man. But still, I will go ahead and offer another Mariam in his way. Therefore, she took Mariam, and eventually Allah rewarded her with Isa. So the same thing is the fear of Allah the Taqwa. If the boy is not there, it doesn't help. The second one is where I think sometimes we make mistakes. When it comes to this issue of Niyaz, and the issue of another. The second one, we learn it from al bayt of the concept of another. We learn it from the house of Mawla and Kainat. Look at Mawla and Kainat. Prophet did not see them for quite some days. Prophet decided to go sit to them. When he visited the house, Bibi Fatima, she told the Prophet, Hassanayn, they've been sick. You know the story. But there's a lesson I want to deduce here, and you know it. Then Prophet said, okay. I want to show you something to do for Allah to cure them. Make another. Another. What is the lesson? Tell Allah, if Hassanayn are cured, you will fast for three days to thank Allah. Eventually, Asalein were cured. When Asalein were cured, there was no money in the house. Mulai Kainat went out to look for something. Somebody wise said he went out to work and get something. And he went, he didn't get the work, but he managed to get something small. So Mulai Kainat got wool. Wool. Rewire said three kilos of wool. And they were not in need of that wood directly. Indirectly, they needed it because they would exchange it with something else. So now, like I not brought the wood. Who was going to stand the wood? It was very fast. <coughs> so that she would give it out and she would get the barley as a result. And then they would use that barley to make bread for them to eat in the house. Now, I want to show you the significance of another. Now, like I not he brought it. They started fasting. As the said, with fast name, the lawyer said they were four, five years. Some said six, seven years. I'll go ahead. Binta Rafinda said, no, I will go so fast. So the whole house were fasting. Now, BB managed by the end of the day to finish only with one wool. So she, they went and exchanged it with one kilo of barley. She started making bread with it. She managed to make five loaves of bread. Now it was time for them to break their fast. 
Now the wife said, as they were preparing to break, the door was not. The one who knocked the door, he shouted and called out, a poor person is here. Will you be able to help this poor person? Now that Baba. Okay, you know the story. They give it out. Finish. Now, they depended on something small, water, some say, and they survived. The next day, the second one, the second kilo, she did the same thing, she got money, another one came. He said, I am an orphan, 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 orphan. They gave it out, they depended on something small. Third one, the third person gave it out, a prisoner, a prisoner, a prisoner, they gave it out. And they depended on something small, and they got Now, Allah Ta'ala appreciated what I requested, isn't it? They said, Inna not ever go, Lewaji Allah. We feed you for the sake of Allah. We neither need it nor reward nor thank you from you. What lesson do we learn from here as a lesson for another? Lesson for another is that if you want Allah to accept it properly, give to those who are in need. That's niyaz. You give me me, I've got money. Wallah. Yes, that's you can do something for Imam, for Allah, there's no problem. But for it to hold more weight, it has to go to those who are in need. Then it will become indeed a serious offer for Bahl and Bad. Okay, we do we eat? Done, finish. We get to reward, no problem. Because Mu'mini laugh at one another, Mu'mini have one another. It's okay. It's soon enough for Mu'mini to be together. But look at Bahl and Bad. They fasted. They were supposed to break the fast. Poor person came. They sacrificed themselves for the sake of that poor person. So, if I was you, I want to make another. I look at my budget. I will divide it. I make something to do go for the mu'minin, and the rest I give it to other mu'minin who are poor. That is the best nazar, and that is the second condition. Your nazar should go to someone who is in need. The one is not in need, no problem, as I mentioned. But the one is in need is more important. You know, the Imam will be more happier. Rather than you spend on someone who is rich, who is fine. The reward is not much. And if you want to know that better, look at the story. Of Abdul Muttalib and Abdullah. Abdullah, the father of our beloved Rasulullah. Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah. You know how Abdullah was given birth and how Abdullah was saved from death, from dying, before he got married to Amina bin Tuhab. Abdul Muttalib used to visit Kaaba and at one day, he fell asleep close to Kaaba. In his sleep, he had a dream. What was the dream of Abdul Muttalib? Mu'min! Abdul Muttalib was Mu'min! Not Kafir, no Uzbillah, as some people claim and report. You know, that time, there was a tribe in Mecca who made sure the source where the water of Zamzam was special from was hidden in the sand. So that people would not get that opportunity to get water again. So Abdul Muttalib was always worried and concerned about that. So he had a dream that he and his children, they were digging for that Zamzam and they managed to find a place where Zamzam water was. Now when he woke up by then, Abdul Muttalib had only one son by the name Harith. Only one son. So they went here and his son and they started digging. They dug and dug and dug and they got exhausted of the water. They got so tired. When they got so tired, somebody wire said it's like they were dying. They exhausted all the energy, two of them, trying to make sure they relocate the water of Zamzam for the Ummah. Now the water said, I wish if Allah will give me ten children, I will sacrifice one of them for the sake of Kaaba. Another. It's not what we do, he has a sacrifice. Another. I will sacrifice one of them for Kaaba. So now, Abdul Muttalib, no, now I made a pledge. So Allah, 
started giving him children. Children, children until his last born, who is Abdullah, the father of our beloved. Ten. Oh, now they are ten. Because nine, you don't do. If Allah doesn't fulfill, you don't fulfill those. Unless when the taqwa is so <laughs> then you know, but you are not obliged, and it's not that you are not expected to fulfill. If I say Allah, I need this amount of million, and I don't get it, I don't fast. Done. But now, Abdul Muttalib is ten. I have to sacrifice one of them. And he loved Abdullah so much. By then they said Abdullah was 14 years, some said he was 17 years, some said 16 years, no reporters and historians. Now they made a Quran. Like a ballot kind of thing. <coughs> Whose name will come out? First one, Abdullah names come out. It means you have to kill Abdullah. Sacrifice him in the way of Allah. And they have their way of sacrificing people for the sake of Allah. Now he loved Abdullah so much. They made another one, Abdullah's name came out. They made another one, Abdullah's name came, came out. Now he had an uncle in Medina, according to the wire. That uncle he said, No, 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 we cannot kill Abdullah. Irash, he came to Makkah and he came with camels. He said, Now let's do this thing between Abdullah and Kamal. Now they do. One camel, Abdullah Nib came. Two camel, until which ten camel, Abdullah Nib. They continue until hundred camels. Only when it was hundred camel, the hundred camels came out and Abdullah was protected. Now those camel were sacrificed. What they did? It? They gave it out to poor people. So if another, or Kondi as we call it, if you do it, think of the poor person who is sleeping outside without a cup of water, who does not have anything in his fridge. Fridge is empty. Some even don't have the fridge. And they are lovers and followers of Alibel. Don't you think if sometimes we think of them and give them some also, it will change their perception towards the mother of Alibel? Don't you think if you do that, Imam Zaman will be happy that you will feel the tummy of one of my lava and is able to stand at night worship Allah? I see in some places, I don't know here, where during this night people make extravagance. Some will design the whole mosque with food. Yes, sweet was the thing during the Imam time. Whereby Imam said, make a sweet and put it in a clay pot. And then you give it out to poor people as a sacrifice in my name. So they will design it and people will not finish eating. Now the Sarafu is going to take responsibility. So therefore, two conditions. Number one, condition for the sake of Allah. Even if you give niyaz in the Muslim, give it for the sake of Allah. You want Imam Zaman to be happy. Mu'mineen came to perform salat. I want them to eat so that they will gain that strength and be able to worship Allah. Reward, you get it for Allah. You want it for name, you will not get to reward, I promise you. Name will get name, and the same people who will give you that name, they will accuse you at the end of the day. They said, acceptance of people is a destination no one will reach until the day of Qiyam. But if you do it for Allah, Allah will appreciate it, even a small artist. That is the difference between Allah and people. Allah it not, doesn't bother about the abundance of it. The quality of it is what Allah wants. And what is quality in the eye of Allah? Quality is in the eye of Allah, not the way you desire it, it's your intention that brings the quality from Allah. So therefore, inshallah, next year or this year, those who are going to do it in your houses, do it, no problem, barakah, blessings. But remember poor persons, when Imam Muzayn al abidin would go out in Medina at night, and he would carry the food on his shoulder. And he would distribute those food to the poor people of Medina. Hence, when he died, those who did not know him, they got to know him. That is why when Maulani Kardinat was buried by Asalaim, when they were coming back from the grave, ah, they met one person sitting on the road. And that person was crying and crying and crying. Asalaim went to him and they sat next to him and they asked him, Oh, Father, why are you crying? And they didn't know Asalaim. Look at all the sincerity. They would give out and nobody would know what they were giving. They will only know after they depart from this world. That is Ahl al -Bayt. Now this person told them, the man that you have just buried, 
Every night he drops something in my house. I am crying because I know from tonight no one will give it to me. As a man cried and he said, do not worry, we'll look after you. I didn't buy it. That's what I said, not ever come and watch him. We feed you, chapter Dar, for the sake of Allah. And the land for the sake of Allah. Your yas in the mosque for the sake of Allah. If there is no yas for the sake of Allah, in yas will be a condition for ibadah and worship. For the sake of Allah. If it is there, alhamdulillah. And if I give you niyaz, la nuridu min kum jaza. I don't expect any reward from you because I'm not doing it for you. If but you are doing me favor by eating my niyaz. Prophet would kiss the hand of a person when a person took sadaqah from Rasulullah. La tuktulu sadaqah tukum belmanni wal ala Allah mishin. Kallani yunfiku maala huri aaa al-nas. Allah said, don't destroy your charity. Don't destroy it, Bilmanni, with raising one's shoulder and another and harming the people you do charity to. Allah said, Bilman has that. Allah said, you think, Madam, you are honest. It's like you are spending to show off. Adil Bait is not like that. So, therefore, inshallah, slowly, slowly, kinogo, kinogo, let's learn from Adil Bait, alayhi salatu salam. Let's try to emulate the Allah. We will change the world within a twinkle of an eye. We will change people's perception about Islam completely. We will be able to prepare the ground for the reappearance of the 12th Imam. That is why I said, Allah so ayadullah. Whoever is looking for Allah, people are the families of Allah. The Prophet said, How are they the families of Allah? If you afflict them of their suffering, you have afflicted the family of Allah. And whoever afflicts your family of their suffering, you will always be with that person. Hence, Allah will be with you until the day of Yaman. May Allah accept us, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amend our wrongs, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever sacrifice we give in this way, whatever food we give, especially these days, we will be doing it for Imam Jafar. Allah, open our heart to do it for your pleasure and your hope, inshallah. If we will be disturbed, because of the human being, sometimes things beyond our control. By ego. Because that is the only thing that can take us to fire easily within a twinkle of an eye. If we will be disturbed by this, and it will become an obstacle, yes, Allah, we are weak. We try, but we are weak. Hold our hands and let us overcome these diseases of the heart, inshallah. And may Allah continue to give us the barakah of our Sif Imam, inshallah. Whoever will take one shilling, one cent in these days, in the name of the Sif Imam, all your hajas, all your need, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill, inshallah. Akhir da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh.